The NFL's most prestigious regular season award is the MVP or the most valuable player. But even if the MVP is an offensive player, he doesn't always win offensive player of the year. It's not really cut and dry as to why that is. But here's the way that many fans have come to understand it. MVP also carries an element of team success and it takes positional value much more into account. While Offensive Player of the Year is more based on stats, who had the craziest numbers and just went off that season. But Offensive Player of the Year gets easily overshadowed. So today I decided, you know what? Let's show these dudes some love. I'll give a summary of their season and their overall career, plus their age and career outlook at the time they won the award. I'll also discuss exactly where they fell in the MVP race. Some players on the list actually won both awards, while others got no MVP votes at all. Man, every year in the league, one offensive player stands above the rest for outstanding offensive play. And today we'll be discussing what happened to every offensive player of the year winner since 2001. This will be a long vid, but it should be a good one. So go and share it with one of your friends. And other than that, cue the Wayne. Two thousand one running back Marshall Falk, age twenty eight, MVP rank first place. Due to Marshall Falk being our very first entry, I could have started this list two years earlier. Dude not only won OPO in one he also won it in two thousand and nineteen ninety nine. In each of these years, dude gained over two thousand yards from scrimmage, not just three, but four times in a row. So why didn't he also win the award in ninety eight? Cause that's the year Terrell Davis went for 2,000 on the ground. But Marshall Falk was one of the early dual threat running backs who you could turn around and hand it to or throw it to him down the field. And his versatile nature gave him a stranglehold on the award. For three years in a row, nobody else had a chance. In each of those years, he rushed for over 1,300. And this running back averaged 84 catches in those seasons. In 99, he became the second player in league history to gain 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving. The 2000 season saw him crowned as league MVP. When these days, it's near impossible for a running back to do that. But his 2001 season was nearly just as good. 50 less total yards and a few less touchdowns but he wasn't too upset that he finished second place because he was barely edged out by his own damn quarterback 2002 running back priest holmes age 29 mvp rank fourth place priest holmes unfortunately had one of the shortest primes i can remember but for a three-year span dude was really off the charts in 1997 this undrafted free agent became the fourth string running back for the baltimore ravens so he worked his way up and in 1998 the former fourth stringer started 13 games. He rushed for over a thousand yards and looked to cement his place in the league, but the next year he got injured and was relegated to second string. He didn't truly break out until he signed with Kansas City, where his rushing and receiving totals took a massive leap. In his first three years with his new team, the former backup made first team all pro in three straight seasons. It was the second of those years when he won offensive player of the year. With 1,600 yards, nearly 700 receiving yards, and 24 total touchdowns in only 14 games. He really had an argument to win again the next season, but we'll talk about that one more once we get to the next entry. Priest Holmes isn't remembered the same as some guys on the list, but before his brief prime was cut short due to injury, he really had become one of the best backs in the league. He led the league in rushing touchdowns on two separate occasions, and on one occasion, he also led the league in total rush yards. But in 2007, a severe neck injury caused them to hang up the cleats once and for all. To be honest, his brief prime had really ended a few years earlier, and he came and went so fast that a lot of people forgot about him. Something that really hurt him are the running backs who came behind him. When Priest went down in KC, Larry Johnson stood up. Then right after Larry, you get Jamal Charles. So Priest's short time was easily lost. His one good year in Baltimore gets lost even easier, because the guy who replaced him is the next guy on on the list 2003 running back jamal lewis age 24 mvp rank fourth place so when priest holmes got injured in 1999 the ravens immediately drafted a running back the next year that running back was none other than Jamal Lewis, who made an instant impact and rushed for 1,300 yards. Three years later, he had far and away the best season of his career. 
as he fell only 40 yards short of breaking an all-time record. This allowed him once again to edge out Priest Holmes, who had an argument for back-to-back -back offensive player of the years. So I posted this poll just a couple of days ago, asking y'all which stat line you thought was more impressive. I posted the stats without the names to weed out potential bias. That said, I was a little bit surprised at the results. 2,000 rush yards, 200 receiving yards, and 14 touchdowns was option number one. 1,400 yards, 690 receiving yards, and 27 touchdowns was option number two. By the day I'm recording this, we got 15,000 votes, with 82% of people choosing option number two. Option number one, that was Jamal Lewis, and option number two, that was Priest Holmes. Both of these stat lines were recorded in the 2003 season, where Jamal Lewis went home with the award. So Jamal slightly edges out Priest home in total yards, but Priest greatly outdoes him when it comes to putting points on the board. So who contributed to winning? Well, the Chiefs had a better record. And it's like, damn, it's starting to seem like Priest should have won it back to back. And even though I'll admit, man, I'm kind of leaning Priest, you could really still make a good argument for Jamal Lewis. See, at the time, he was only the fifth player in league history to go for the coveted 2,000 rush yard. And rush yards are solely up to the running back to gain while receiving yards will of course depend heavily on the quarterback. Of course, offensive line actually affects them both, so that pretty much cancels out in that little part of the argument. But outside of the 2,000 yards, you gotta give Jamal Lewis credit for one major thing that the poll just can't show. During the 2003 season, man, Jamal Lewis's quarterbacks were two dudes named Kyle Bowler and Anthony Wright. Those dudes combined for only 2,400 passing yards, 16 passing touchdowns, and 19 picks. So every week, every defense keyed in to stop Jamal. And week after week, every one of them failed. Despite defenses loading up, he still goes for 2,000 all while averaging 5.4 yards a carry. Priest Holmes that same year averaged 4.4 a carry on a much more balanced and overall better offense. There's just something really nice about calling uncreative plays and just turning around and giving it to a dude and he go and get six yards. And once you add the historical significance of the 2,000 yards rushing, again, only eight people have ever done it. Since Terrell Davis did it in 98, there's basically been a rule established. If you rush for 2,000 yards, you get Offensive Player of the Year. And that's a rule that stays consistent for everybody else on this list. 2004, quarterback, Peyton Manning, age 28, MVP rank number one. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that has all the tools for dads this year. Fellas, if you're looking for the perfect gift for Father's Day, look no further than Manscaped and their collection of products. Introducing the Beard Hedger Trimmer, a great gift for any dad who loves technology and loves new gadgets. It features a 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade to cut through hair with ease. The trimmer also has a rotary wheel that's built in, and it features up to 20 different hair cutting lengths. And since it's waterproof and cordless, your dad can use it in the shower or at the sink with virtually no cleanup. Next, you got the Weed Whacker 2.0, nose and ear trimmer. For those dads who's starting to show a little too much nose and ear hair, it's got a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with a 360 rotary dual blade system. Bro, it's really high performance and has a rechargeable battery with a charge that lasts up to 45 minutes. Plus, it's cordless and waterproof and can also be used in the shower. And finally, the Lawnmower 4.0. Old trim. Ceramic blades can save tech to help reduce nicks and cuts. This way your dad can relax and groom with confidence. This one goes for up to 90 minutes, but when you do have to recharge it, it comes with a wireless charging system that'll make any dad geek out. Why not give the Lawnmower 4.0 and the Weed Whacker for Father's Day? The Manscaped makes it easy as both are included in the Performance Package 4.0. The package includes the Crop Preserver, Crop Reviver, and comes with two free gifts. The Shared Travel Bag, and you get a pair of the Manscaped Boxer Briefs. So that's like a gift on top of another gift, which makes you one of the greatest gift givers of all time. So don't wait, go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping. All when you use promo code FLIMLO20 at checkout. Again, that's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code FLIMLO20 at manscaped.com. Hey, your dad joined over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. They got the right tools, butter family jewels. Man, shout out to Manscaped once again for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, it's time to jump back in. 2004, quarterback, 
Peyton Manning, age 28, MVP rank number one. So during the 10 year span between 96 and 2006, this award was won by a running back 90% of the time. That's nine times out of 10, bro, with only one exception. And it was none other than the founder, of Omaha Productions. During Peyton Manning's seventh season in the NFL, he was coming off his first ever co-MVP. Well, his first league MVP award of any kind. I'm just saying he did split the award with the late great Steve McNair. But in 2004, dude went to another level. He threw for 4,500 yards, 49 touchdowns, and only 10 picks in his best season as a Colt. He led the league in both passer rating and passing touchdowns. And this was after leading in passing yards one year earlier. His 9.9 .9 touchdown rate was the sixth highest in league history. And it's literally the highest in the entire 21st century. Everybody else who's even in the top 10 are from the 1940s, the 50s, and 60s. This time he was damn near voted as unanimous MVP as he got 98% of the MVP votes. And he spread the ball around so well he broke another record as the coach became the first team in history to have three 1,000 yard receivers all with 10 touchdowns apiece. Bro that right there is a crazy stat. Even with all the crazy passing numbers in the modern game, I don't remember the last time we had something like that. Peyton Manning would go on to win five total MVPs which all but assures he'll show up on this list again. But many people believe this was the best version of Peyton so we could be talking the greatest version of an all time great. 2005 running back Sean Alexander age 28 MVP rank first place real quick let me tell you how dumb I was as a kid I really thought Sean Alexander was a one-year wonder the truth is his prime actually lasted five seasons or five and a half seasons or like five and three quarters first off dude was a two-time 1,000 yard rusher at Alabama but to be fair Alabama wasn't what it is now Dude was a first round pick, but he played for the Seahawks. And bro, I'm from the South, so I ain't never really watched them. My introduction to Sean, and I can't be the only one, was when he was on the cover of Madden 2007. Problem was, the game dropped at the end of his prime, one year after the best season of his career. Six years earlier, he was drafted 19th overall, and by his second year in the league, he rushed for 1,300 yards. He also led the league in rushing touchdowns that year, but it wouldn't be the last or the most emphatic. Also, early in his career, dude was a solid receiver out the backfield, but over time, that portion of his game disappeared. And a funny thing about thinking that dude was a one-year wonder was the fact that he got better every year for five seasons so in 2002 he dropped in rush yards a little but both his receiving yards and touchdowns increased in 05 he would peak but it was one hell of a peak he rushed for 1900 yards and 27 touchdowns so this was the second time he led the league in rushing touchdowns and like i said man this time was far more significant than the first see every year since there's only been one instance of a gap this big between first and second place so from 2007 to 2022 the average gap between first and second was 1.8 touchdowns but in 05, Sean Alexander led by seven scores, which kind of made me feel bad that I slept on dude as a kid. But the next year, just like many before him, Sean Alexander fell victim to the infamous Madden curse. He was also a running back who just turned 29, so his downfall at that point was kind of inevitable. The Seahawks had no clue though, and they gave him a new contract, a eight year deal worth 62 million. However, only 15 million of that was guaranteed, and sadly for Sean, that's probably all he took home. He got hurt in week three the same year he got paid. He came back and had an okay year, but he was still playing through injury. The next year, he broke his damn wrist in week one and played through that but in week five suffered a herniated disc ain't no plan through that one so he had to hang up the cleats only two years after he was on the Madden cover. 2006, running back, LaDainian Tomlinson, age 27, MVP rank, first place. Some of y'all probably caught it, but when I was talking about the gap between first and second place and rushing touchdown leaders, I averaged the gap between 07 and 2022, but Sean Alexander won the award in 05. So I skipped 2006, I just completely cut it out, cause this dude right here would've ruined my whole stat. In 06, LaDainian Tomlinson led the league in rushing touchdowns and the gap between him and second place was 11 whole scores bro his 28 touchdowns was 11 scores more than larry johnson in second place with a respectable 17 and at the risk of losing momentum that i didn't built up in this segment i'm gonna pause here and shout out my boy marion the barbarian
LT was one of the best running backs I ever seen. It just seemed like there was nothing on the field he couldn't do. He didn't rush for under a thousand till he was 30 years old. He rushed for 1700 yards in a year when he also had 100 catches. Bro, every time you saw this dude, he was in the end zone doing that little hey you know what i'm saying lt but 2006 had to be his greatest season he led the league in rushing yards rushing touchdowns and overall scoring when he retired he ranked fifth in career rushing yards and check it out he ranked second in career rushing touchdown then he also finished third place with career receptions for a running back you know what i'm saying not like overall he was the true embodiment of a complete running back would have worked on any team and any scheme any system 2007 quarterback tom brady age 30 mvp rank bro what the hell you think I don't know how much I really need to say about this one. I said Brady 2007. You know the year with Randy Moss when they went 16 and 0 and haters had to stop calling him a game manager as he threw bombs down the field to who was probably your favorite receiver. 4,800 yards, 50 tuds, eight picks, somehow even better than Peyton Manning in 04. He wasn't a scrappy game manager. This dude was a dog. And whoever said he couldn't throw it deep, bro, they lied. At this point, bro, this man was already a three-time champion. But when it came to MVPs, that was all Peyton Manning. Brady could have been satisfied as the guy with more rings, but he had to go and break Peyton's regular season records as well. Before this, no quarterback had ever thrown for 50 touchdowns. Nobody had gone undefeated since 1978. In the first round of the playoffs, this man broke another record. He completed 26 of 28 passes against the Jags. That 92.9 completion percentage was the highest in any game ever, regular season or the playoffs. But unfortunately for the seven-time Super Bowl champ, his greatest regular season was the year he couldn't finish. 2008, quarterback, Drew Brees. Age 29, MVP rank, no votes. Throughout this entire era, Drew Brees, who wasn't 6'4 and didn't have a big arm, was always fighting for respect. And for his first five years, it never came in San Diego. Just a couple years after Drew took over as the starter, the San Diego Chargers drafted his replacement. Eli pulled an Eli, Phillip Rivers came to town, and that really could have been the last we heard of Drew Brees. And if you know anything about Brees, you know that put a chip on his shoulder. That same year, Drew made his first Pro Bowl, but the very next year, he tore his labrum and his throwing arm. So the Chargers offered him a puffed up incentive lace contract, supposedly worth $50 million with $2 million guaranteed. Now keep in mind, they drafted Phillip Rivers fourth overall and clearly wanted him to play. But I think they wanted to keep Drew on an incentive lace deal with incentives he never hit on the bench watching Phillip Rivers. That's where the New Orleans Saints came into the picture, as no other team was willing to take that risk from his shoulder. Dude signed with New Orleans and the rest is really history, as his arrival facelifted that whole organization. But first he had to go through some trials as the year he went to New Orleans was the same year Hurricane Katrina hit. Bro, the Saints couldn't even play in their own home stadium, as it was being put to more important use as a shelter. The team went 3-13 that year but Drew embraced the city and the city embraced him that was really a synergy there then coach Sean Payton came in the next season and they was contenders pretty much every year after that till Breeze retired but 2008 wasn't one of those years as the Saints finished with just an 8-8 eight and eight record I'd imagine this is why he got no MVP votes but still walked away with offensive player of the year he was the second quarterback ever to throw for over 5,000 yards. He led the league in passing yards and passing touchdowns. They said dude was a stat quarterback who would never win in the playoffs. Then the very next season, the Saints won the Super Bowl. 2009, running back Chris Johnson. Age 24, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that in 09, Drew Brees finally got an MVP vote. The bad news is that our 2009 entry did not. After a good rookie season where he rushed for 1,200 yards, Chris Johnson predicted he doubled that the next season. And the craziest thing happened, he actually did it and became the sixth player in league history to rush for 2,000 yards. While he didn't rush for 2,500, he did gain 25 total, including rushing and receiving while averaging 5.6 a carry. Now, the first entry on this list was Marshall Falk, and no one gained more yards from scrimmage in one season than he did. Until Chris Johnson, CJ2K came up long the fastest actual running back we've ever seen on the field not a gadget player not a slash no dude was a running back he ran a 4-2-4 and you saw every bit of it Chris would never quite get back to the heights of that season but remained a productive 1,000 yard back to 2013 
During his prime years, dude was shockingly durable, as usually speed backs are known to miss a lot of games. But Chris Johnson only missed two games total for the first seven years of his NFL career. But once he started missing games, like he never really stopped, as his final three seasons were plagued with injury. But dude was one of the most unique backs in recent memory, and one of the best, especially in 09. 2010, quarterback Tom Brady, age 33, MVP rank first place. By 2010, Tom Brady has shed his seventh round pick, kind of overachiever persona and left it far behind. In 2009, dude married a supermodel, which you've probably heard a lot about during these last few recent years. He signed a deal at the time that made him the highest player in the league. He went from backup to star quarterback to all out celebrity. But he was also in the middle of a Super Bowl drought, which is funny because the Super Bowl drought is literally most guys whole careers. But after winning his third ring in 2004, Dude wouldn't get another until 10 years later. But between Super Bowls, he won two MVPs. I guess you could say he was in the stat portion of his career. But Brady's stats in 2010, they don't look as crazy as his 07 stats, or at least not at first glance. He once again led the league in passing touchdowns and passer rating, and became the fastest quarterback to win 100 regular season games. He threw for 3,900 yards and 36 touchdowns, all while only throwing a forgettable four picks. At this point in his career, he still wasn't considered the best by many, which is easy to forget in hindsight, that's really how it was. I looked up three top quarterback lists that dropped in 2010 and Tom Brady wasn't number one on any of them. ESPN had him second, Bleacher Report had him third, and SB Nation had the man ranked sixth. That's not a shot, I'm just showing you what the thoughts was at the time. Then four years later he started up another run and in a six year span won four more rings and another MVP. 2011 quarterback Drew Brees, age 32, MVP rank, second place. By the end of 2011, Drew Brees was no longer an underdog, but he still wasn't seen as quite on the level of his peers. By this point, Brady and Manning had six MVPs combined, while Brees had finished second on three separate occasions. But I still felt Drew solidified himself once and for all that season, where he passed for the Triple Crown, leading the league in passing yards, passing touchdowns, and completion percentage. He threw for damn near 5,500 yards, which completely shattered Dan Marino's record. This was one of five different times he threw for 5K, and it may have been his best as he did it while completing 71%. He threw for 46 touchdowns and just 14 picks just two years after hoisting up the Lombardi Trophy, but he played in such a tough era he still didn't make first team all pro. After 2011, Drew Brees would lead the league in passing yards four more times but never won Offensive Player of the Year again. He also never won an MVP, but he's still a first ballot Hall of Famer. Now 2012, running back Adrian Peterson, age 27, MVP rank, first place. To make a quick point, let's go back before the list started. Look at 1996 through 2005. For those 10 years, nine winners of this award played running back. Like, that's pretty crazy, right? But from 2007 up to 2016, which is really four years beyond where we've actually made it, but the percentage of running backs winning just dips so dramatically, and it really pops out when you're just staring at this list. The running backs to win from 07 to 2016, dropped to a whopping three out of 10. So from 90% running backs to 30% running backs, this is the period where running backs started to be devalued in the league. But there were a few guys who transcended this trend. Their coldness just had to be rewarded in some way. A key figure in that movement was Adrian Peterson. And bro, you had to really see this dude to believe it. In his first NFL season, he rushed for 1,300 yards. By only year two, he was getting MVP votes. But by age 26, it seemed this run might be over. After suffering a torn ACL and MCL. Up to that point, those injuries had been career death sentences, as guys never seemed to come back quite the same. But Adrian Peterson wasn't guys, he was him. And for him, the process went down a little different. When he vowed to come back stronger and better than ever before, the collective sure did. was loud and deliberate. Yeah, he looked good running drills, but just eight months after the injury, no way he could cut at game speed or better yet, take a hit. 
Wadu came back and rushed for only 2,000 yards as he became the seventh player in league history to do so. But in the last week of the season, he would need a monster game of 208 yards to break the all-time record. This crazy dude, really, bro, he really almost did it. He was nine yards short. He rushed for 199. And this was in a game that the Vikings had to win to clinch a playoff berth and continue their season. They handed it to him 30 times and he ran them to a win. So coming off of that the time was a career altering injury, he rushed for more yards than all but one single man in history. In that game, it wasn't like he was getting two yards a carry, like trying to force the record despite being inefficient. No, he averaged 5.9 yards per carry in that game, which is great. And it was right on par with his season average. It was the greatest ACL comeback in NFL history. It even changed the way other people looked at the injury and it changed the intensity in which they attack their rehab 2013 quarterback paid manning for the second time age 37 mvp rank one so something that i've learned about the all-time greats is that there's some level of greatness throughout almost their whole careers but sometimes people don't recognize it because they compare that player to the best version of that player but what many people fail to see is that even a diminished version of an all-time great is still better than most players so the last time this dude was on the list, nearly 10 years younger than the point where he's at now. Back then, he was the first quarterback to have three receivers to all go for 1,000 yards and 10 plus touchdowns. Well, he somehow managed to level up again. This time he had four receivers with 10 plus scores. Bro, look at this. This man used every weapon available. The X receiver, Z receiver, tight end, the slot, the running back, everybody eats b at age 37 peyton manning seemed like he was 42. the next surgery he had when he was 35 took a few years off his storied career regardless old man peyton with a slight pot belly throws for more yards than he did at any other point in his career for his entire career he averaged 4200 yards and 31 touchdowns per season we've established this he was that dude but at age 37 he decided to go in his bag and find a 5500 yard season with 55 touchdowns on the way to his fifth and most emphatic mvp he led his team past brady and made it to the super bowl at this point in his career bro he still couldn't shake the greatest regular season quarterback tag that had been put on him and when he got to that super bowl they got beat to sleep which obviously did nothing to help said narrative but while the last game of that season didn't turn out the way he wanted it doesn't change the fact that this was a crazy historic season he tied the record for most 400 yard games in the season and scored 50 points more time than any other team in history the next year he still threw for 4700 yards but when he finally fell off due to compiling injuries and age all he did that season was win another super bowl 2014 running back demarco murray age 26 mvp rank third place don demarco only plays seven years in the league during that time dude only played a full season twice in seven years but during that 2014 season he kind of captured lightning in the bottle Three different times in his seven seasons, dude rushed for over a thousand yards, but he only rushed for 1,300 or more during this one single season. But he had a special year back in 2014, and right when the season started, you knew he was going off. Bro, he opened up the year with eight straight games where he rushed for over 100 yards in every single one of them. That eight game streak broke Jim Brown's record that had stood since 1958. For most consecutive games with 100 yards rushing, somebody finally broke it after 50 years. By the time the year was over and you look back at the numbers, he went 100 plus in 12 out of 16 games. He also caught 57 passes for another 416 with a nice 89% catch rate. He won the rushing title for the 2014 season and was tied for the most rushing touchdowns that year as well. DeMarco Murray's biggest issue was always injury, as he was much more talented than his career might suggest. Don't get me wrong, like he definitely had a solid career, but it's easy to see that injuries held him back from even more. He ended up retiring after injuring his knee in 2018 and now coaches running backs at his alma mater. 2015, quarterback Cam Newton, age 26, MVP rank number one. 
Cam Newton arrived in the National Football League on the heels of the great pocket quarterback era. Most of those dudes have already been represented on this list. That type of quarterback is what teams wanted. Cam's career ended in a way that made people forget that in 2015, he was completely unstoppable. He threw for 3,800 yards and 35 touchdowns, and he rushed for 640 with another 10 scores. That's a total stat line of 4,500 yards and 45 touchdowns with only 12 picks. Some people have a hard time giving credit to mobile quarterbacks. They like to pretend that rushing yards don't move the team down the field. And while people love to compare Josh Allen to Big Ben, I don't care what you say, I've always seen Cam Newton. In 2015, Cam wasn't just putting up numbers in a losing effort. Dude led his team to a 15-1 record. He then led that team to a Super Bowl appearance where he lost to that old version of Peyton Manning we was just talking about. I would have loved to see what Cam could have done with the Stefan Dig, but outside of Greg Olsen, he never got a top weapon. But over time, Cam tried to play Superman too many times. Once he declined, the fall off was fast and steep. He never added the necessary refinements to his game by working with a Jordan Palmer. Josh Allen learned from his mistake. Cam instead continued to try to rely on his physical gifts, attempting to play the game at 30 like he did at 22. 2016, quarterback Matt Ryan, age 31, MVP rank number one. Coincidentally, just as I got to this section, Matt Ryan posted this on Twitter 10 minutes ago. He says it's not a retirement post, but I'm assuming one's coming. But either way, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Matt Ryan was always a good quarterback, but in 2016, Cal Shanahan helped make him a great one. 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns, and only 7 picks, with a quarterback rating of 117. In 2016, he came insanely close to going triple crown, but he finished second place in passing touchdowns and yards. But second in both of those and number one in passer rating, his all-around greatness that year earned him the MVP. Plus, he led the Falcons to an 11-5 record and ended up taking his team all the way to the Super Bowl. But if you're wondering why you really never hear about this great season, well, that's because of the ugly way it ended. Matt Ryan's greatest season was reduced to a meme when he blew a 28-3 lead in Super Bowl 51. Two years later, he had a similar statistical season, but the team's success wasn't there like in 2016. All in all, dude really had a hell of a career. He was never my favorite, but I gotta give him credit. But that collapse in the Super Bowl will overshadow everything else, and I understand why, but it also kind of sucks. But I'm actually looking forward to see how all these quarterbacks that I grew up watching transition into broadcasting. I got a feeling Matt will be good, and I can't wait to check him out. I'm sure he'll bring the same consistency he brought to his playing career. 2017, running back Todd Gurley age 23 mvp rank second place todd Gurley has the shortest career of anyone on this list as he played only six seasons in the nfl his prime lasted two seasons but what a prime it was as he led the league in touchdowns during both of those seasons in 2017 Gurley was somewhat of a throwback to the marshall fox and priest holmes and lts from back in the day backs that gave you work on the ground as a runner but could shred defenses in the passing game as well in 2017 he rushed for 1300 yards and 13 scores then caught 64 passes for 800 receiving yards that put him over 2,000 all-purpose yards from scrimmage and tech on another six touchdowns through the air the next season he got 45 million fully guaranteed which was great for him because chronic knee problems would cut his career short after 2017 he had one more season with that type of production and that was all she wrote 2018 quarterback pat mahomes age 23 mvp rank number one patrick mahomes is the most talented qb we've ever seen he's on the cusp of becoming the greatest quarterback we've ever seen bro 2018 was just his second year in the league his first as a starter and he won mvp he threw for 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, and only 12 picks as a first-year starter. Then he led his team to a 12-4 record, won the AFC Championship, and made it to the Super Bowl. He led the league in passing touchdowns, finished second in passing yards. Not at 28 or 29, bro. He did it at 23. He's not the youngest MVP ever because Lamar took it the next year, but he sustained and expanded on his greatness every season. At 27 years old, dude's a first ballot Hall of Famer, 
as he's already sitting on two Super Bowls. And with the way the Chiefs have constantly reloaded, bro, who knows how many dude will have once it's all over. His play style is literally ridiculous. The stuff he pulls off with the flair he pulls it off with boggles the mind and he's still crazy efficient. His current 105.7 career passer rating is the highest in league history, which is insane. So when your highlight tape looks like this, there's no way your resume should still look like this. 2019, wide receiver Michael Thomas. Age 26, MVP rank, no votes. Michael Thomas in 2019 ushered in a new era for this award. The last receiver to win before him was 30 years earlier. At this point, we've already been through the running back phase of the list, then the quarterback phase of the list, and this starts the receiver phase. Since Michael Thomas won it, man, three of the last four years, the award has been taken home by a wide receiver. Dude led the league in both receiving yards and receptions as he made the Saints feel good about his $100 million contract. He finished that season with 149 catches and 1,700 yards with nine touchdowns to go with it. Since that season, however, dude is barely taking the field as odd injuries have lingered a lot longer than expected. Fans have grown increasingly frustrated with dude over the years, but he's expected to be ready for training camp, so we'll see. The year 2020, running back Derrick Henry. Age 26, MVP rank, zero votes. In 2019, King Henry led the league in rush yards and touchdowns, but he had to do it again in 2020 to get recognition. This time, he added the fact that he went for over 2,000 yards, and given the historical significance, like, you have to give it to him. Dude's the first player ever to have a 2,000 yard season in high school, college, and the NFL. This former Heisman winner keeps adding to the resume. The only thing left to get is a Lombardi trophy. Unlike a lot of backs on this list, two years after winning, dude hasn't slowed down much, if any at all. Last year, he put up 1,500 yards and 13 tuds, so I'm expecting more of the same in the upcoming season. Despite being known for his size and his powerful and scary still farms that make grown men cry, dude's also known for breaking crazy long runs despite the fact that he's 6'4", 250 pounds. He currently holds or is tied for the record of longest run in league history with a 99-yard touchdown run in 2018. But in 2020, the year he won OPOY, he broke a 94-yarder in that season as well. You do not want to tackle him, and if you do, you can't catch him. One of the most unique skill sets we've seen at his position. One thing about the Titans, bro, they got some running backs. Earl Campbell, Eddie George, Chris Johnson, and King Henry. 2021 wide receiver Cooper Cup, age 28, MVP rank, third place. For most of the era that's been covered on this list, slot receivers have been slow, short, possession type receivers. Wes Welker was dominant at converting first downs. Julian Edelman, Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz, that was a good one. But no slot receiver has ever dominated a season like Cooper Cup did in 2021. Dude really went for 2,000 receiving yards from the slot. Bro, when I was a kid, that was thought to be impossible. He broke the record for yards from scrimmage by any wide receiver, all while earning a triple crown leading in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Bro, this man had 145 catches, 1,947 yards, 16 touchdowns, all in one season, then capped it all off with Super Bowl MVP. Like, do you understand how ridiculous that is? That's crazy, bro. That should never, ever happen. It's impossible. How the He was a player who took a while before he truly broke out. And he got injured the next year, so he wasn't able to follow up. So this season coming up for Cooper Cup is a big one. Will he regress back down to good or stay up here at great? The third round pick dominated college ball. And when finally given a chance, he dominated in the league. Bro, he really like changed how you view slot receivers. They can be so much more than just a dude who converts on third down. And that role is massive, like it's hugely important, but they can do that and still take the top off the defense. The space he creates on his routes make it look like he's playing on rookie. And as long as he's healthy, he's showing up every week. He lets you know your slot receiver can be your number one receiver, like number one on your team or in the whole damn league. 2022 wide receiver Justin Jefferson, age 23, MVP rank 5th. So before Cooper Cup had that amazing year in the slot, 
Your boy Justin Jefferson was doing it in college. He had 1,500 yards and 18 touchdowns. With Chase on the outside and Joe Burrow behind center, and you knew I was going to find a way to mention some Bengals players, but with them and Terrence Marshall, Justin Jefferson was in the slot. And I remember watching just thinking he makes it look so easy. But in the NFL, he plays primarily outside receiver still going into the slot about 30% of the time. But it don't matter where he lines up, the dude is unguardable. And every year so far, he's only gotten better. Last year, he led the league in receptions and yards, as he made it to his third Pro Bowl in three years. He's never had a season less than 1,400 yards, and he's only had one season with less than 100 catches. His ability to change directions while running full speed is second to none, and he makes every type of catch imaginable. As a young player, he can sometimes get a little too emotional, but I've only seen him do it in the spirit of trying to win. And unlike Cooper Cup, man, he's done it from the jump at a younger age in a bigger, faster, more athletic body. The sky's the limit for this dude. And he really could go down as the greatest wide receiver to ever play this game. Currently, I believe it's another guy who played for the Vikings. And it'll take years of production for Jettas to pass him. Or maybe you think it's Rice, but that's really besides the point. I'm just saying with his skill set and early production, he got a shot. And this season coming up is yet another opportunity with a new running mate and wide receiver Jordan Addison. It'll be interesting to see if his numbers go up like they've done every other year or if they start to go down. Either way, dude is clearly one of the best receivers in the league, if not the best, and he's only 23. As far as who's gonna win the award in 2023, we'll see. I just hope he wears stripes. Yo, I also did vids on the last 10 offensive and defensive rookie of the year winners, Click here to check it out.